Hi, this is an example of line, surface, and volume integrals, particularly the line integral. So in this example, we're going to uh, we're given a vector field f, which has got some component in the x direction, y direction, z direction, and we're going to calculate the circulation of f around the closed path that is shown. So we've got this unit cube, and we're we're walking. Um, in this path that I've got. So it's it's a directed path, of course, and it's closed path, so we're calculating the circulation. Now, in the figure, I've labeled the path, uh, I've, I guess I've segmented it into uh, labels 1, 2, 3, and 4. So if that was not given in the problem, you would have to do that. You would have to know that you have to separate these things or segment the path into these four uh, segments. So what we're after here is the circulation. So we're calling this path, the, the entire path L, it's a closed contour or a closed path. And we're calculating again the the closed uh, contour integral of F dot DL like this and that's called the circulation. And so the idea here again is that we're going to calculate that integral for path 1 right and then add that to the integral over path 2 add that to the integral over path 3 and add that to the integral over path 4 okay and since we're working with a, a cube this is a good situation for Cartesian coordinates so we're going to keep the the vertices labeled here in Cartesian coordinates and I'll remind you that the uh, the directional displacement is uh, given by dx times a unit vector in the x-direction plus dy times a unit vector in the y-direction plus dz times a unit vector in the z direction like this. Okay and a key question here is uh, what is changing? Okay this is a question that we're going to want to answer not only in this problem but many problems in electromagnetics. What is changing? Calculus by the way is really the study of of how of quantities change and so we're going to keep this question in mind as we go through each of these four segments what is changing alright so let us start with segment one so we want to calculate across that segment one the integral f dot dl okay now uh, I, I'm going to ask myself right away what is changing as we walk uh, across this segment one and notice the arrow so we're going from x equals one to x equals zero so right away we see that x is changing as we go through segment one okay is y changing no y is not changing it stays at zero and z also stays at zero as we walk down the x-axis so only x is changing so dz which is a small change in z is zero dy which is a small change in y is zero so dl is just dx times ax so all of that said we we want to integrate x goes from one to zero okay notice we're starting at one we're going to zero the direction is important there and then our F, our vector field, is x squared ax minus xz ay minus y squared az, like this, dotted with dl, and we've already said then that dl is dx times a unit vector in the x direction. Okay, now the uh, dot product obeys the distributive law so I can distribute that in and the unit vector ax is orthogonal to ay so when I dot ay with dot with ax I get zero and when I dot az similarly with ax I get zero so the only thing that's non-zero here is when I distribute ax in with ax and ax dotted with ax is equal to one since 
ax is a unit vector. So my integral simplifies to this, which is a scalar, right, because we did a dot product. So where did the axs go? Again, ax dotted with ax is equal to 1. So I integrate that with respect to x, no problem. That's 1 third x cubed, right? x goes from 1 to 0. So that gives me negative 1 third. Okay. So I'll, I'll just uh, I'll come back to that in a little bit, but I'm going to move on to path 2. So I look at path 2 in the figure, okay, and I'll write it here. We're going to integrate across path 2, f dot dl. Okay, and so I again, I ask this question, what is changing along that path? So the segment 2, so I, I see that y is going from 0 to 1, so y changes. Does x change? No. x stays at 0. Does z change? No. The height stays at 0. So only y changes. So dx is 0, small change in x is 0. dz is 0, small change in z is 0. So my integral now becomes y goes from 0 to 1. Again, the direction is important there. Of, again, I have x squared ax. This is the f vector field. xz ay minus y squared az dotted with, and we said that dl then becomes dy ay. Now I'm going to exploit the uh, orthogon uh, orthogonal properties of these unit vectors, right? ay dotted with ax is 0, ay dotted with az is 0, the only thing that's non-zero is ay dotted with ay, and ay dotted with ay is 1 because it's a unit vector. So this integral becomes negative xz dy. Okay, now we're integrating with respect to y, and so from the perspective of y, x and z are constants. So they can come out of the integral and then I would get, I would integrate and I, so I would just get a y there and I would go from 0 to 1 and this is y equals 0 to 1. But guess what? x is constant at 0, right? We said x is constant at 0 and so is z for that matter. z is constant for 0 on segment 2. So it doesn't matter that y goes from 0 to 1. x and z are 0 so this integral is 0. All right, we'll come back to that in a little bit, but now we're going to move on to segment 3. So segment 3, again, I'll, I'll write it here. We're integrating across segment 3 of f dot dl, right? And so I need to ask the question, what is changing? What is changing when I, when I walk along path 3? Well, I've got two things here that are changing. I've got x x is going from 0 to 1 as I walk across segment 3 and z, the height is changing from 0 to 1 as well because I'm going across that diagonal. y is not changing, y stays at 1. So I've got two things that are changing here and so um, what we said y is not changing so dy, a small change in y is 0 but then but then dl, then I've got this x component, I've got the z component. Okay so this integral becomes you know, we can, we can take y and z separately, so we've got y equals 1 to 0. The y's go from 1, right? Oh, no, no, excuse me, let me back up, that's not right. The x's, the x's go from 0 to 1, excuse me. So, we're, you know, we're at the x equals 0, and then when we walk up this diagonal, we're at x equals 1. And then we said z also changes. z goes from 0 to 1, a height of 0 and a height of 1. And then the, again, the vector field here, f, is x squared ax minus xz ay minus y squared az. Okay, dotted with dl. And dl, we said, because y is not changing, dl is actually dx ax, it's got an x component, right, there's a change in x, and it's got a change in z, there's a z component to our change, 
right? So hope, hopefully you're getting uh, used to these these kinds of things by now. But this this path three is a little bit different than the previous two paths because we have two changes, or our, our changes in two directions. Okay, so now I dot this through, and we're going to keep the bounds for right now. X equals zero to one, z equals zero to one. Now when I dot the the x ax through the only non-zero hopefully you realize this by now the only non-zero component is when I dot it with ax so this becomes uh, x squared dx okay again that's the first in each quantity there and then when I distribute the z component in the only non-zero component is when I dot it with this other z component so this gives me minus y squared um, dz okay now the trick here and you, you have to think about multivariable calculus whenever you took multivariable calculus how, how did you solve this integral the trick is that x and z are changing together right as as we change x z changes with it right as we walk forward in the picture we also walk up. So x and z are not independent of one another. They are dependent. Can we write an equation for that path? Can we write an equation for that? Well, over here, at the beginning of the path, x is 0, z is 0. And then we, we walk linearly, and the end of the path, x is 1, z is 1. So it seems to me that the relationship the relationship between x and z is simply x equals z, right? When x is 0, z is 0, and when x is 1, z is 1. And it's, it's, a, it's a line, it's linear, so there's, there, there would be no squares or anything like that. So x equals z is the equation of that path, right? And then that also means that if I, if I take a derivative, then that means that dx is equal to dz. What I'm trying to do here is eliminate or write x in, term, in terms of z or z in terms of x so I can eliminate one of those variables. And so I look here and z only comes up in one spot. So um, what I want to do is make my life as easy as possible and I'm just going to replace this one z with x then. So dz is dx and then I've eliminated all of the z's. Okay, so my integral now becomes x equals 0 to 1 x squared dx minus y squared dx. Right? Now we've got one integration. We can do that again because z is dependent on x. They change together. So now this integral becomes 1 third x cubed, right? And then um, the second piece, y squared is a constant as far as x is concerned. Concerned, So this just becomes minus y squared x, and I go from 0 to 1. And when I put plug in 1, I get 1 third minus uh, y squared. Well, y squared, y during this whole thing is, is fixed at 1. So this becomes 1 third minus 1. And when I plug in 0 for x, I get 0. And so this becomes minus 2 thirds is the answer there for path 3. All right, now I'm going to move on to path 4. I'll come back to these things in a second. Um, actually, I I'm, going to, I'm going to try to do this uh, up top. I'll try to squeeze it in up top here. OK, so path 4. So here we go again, right? We're going to try to try to calculate f dot dl. So I need to ask myself, what is changing in this path? Well, I'm going across a diagonal again, so that means I'm going to have two things that are changing. What what is what are those two things? So I see that x is actually being held constant at one, and it is y right that is changing from 1 to 0 and it is also z that's changing from 1 to 0 okay so coming back up here to dl the the change in x is 0 so i just have uh, the y change and the z change okay so let me write write all that out in math terms then y equals 1 to 0 again the direction matters and z equals 1 to 0 
of, and then I have my force field there, x squared ax minus xz ay minus y squared az dotted with dl. Well, we already said the change in x is zero, and so dl is just dy ay plus dz az. Now, what's the next question I'm going to ask, right? What, you know, what's the next step? Well, you should, you should again, you should be getting more and more comfortable with this as we work through these examples. The next thing to do is distribute the dot product in and note, you know, the orthogonal components. So the only non-zero pieces here, when I distribute the ay in, is ay dotted with ay. So this becomes negative xz dy. And then when I distribute the az in, the only non-zero component is with the az, whose arrow I left off there. And so this becomes negative y squared dz, right? Okay, now, just like we did in piece 3, we, we notice that y and z change together. At the beginning of the path 4, both y and z are 1, and then at the end of path 4, both y and z are 0, and they, they, they change linearly. So we notice that y equals z is the equation of that path. And if I differentiate, I get dy is equal to dz. So what I can do is just make a substitution so I can get rid of the y's or the z's, but I have to choose one. Okay, and it, it probably doesn't matter in this case because uh, I, have, I have some y's hanging around, right? I have two y's there and I have two z's hanging around. So um, I'm just going to pick one and I'm going to get rid of the z's. So wherever I see a z, I'm going to uh, substitute a y in there. So um, my y's are still going from 0 to 1 and then this uh, this first term is negative x y, right? Because y is equal to z. And then dy minus y squared and then dz is equal to dy so this is my uh, single integration. Now I'm going to need some more space, so I'm going to I'm going to erase what we did for path one, but I'm going to keep the answer to path one because I need I need that guy. So I'm just going to re remind ourselves that this was path one here. Okay. So now continuing on path four, I need to do this integration. So I'm integrating with respect to y. So this is negative. Um, one half x y squared, right, minus one third y cubed, and the y's go from one to zero. So when I plug in the top bound is uh, zero, I get zero, right? And when I plug in the lower bound, I get um, the negative change to positive because I'm subtracting the lower bound. So this is one half x plus one third. And what is x? Remember x was constant as we go through this path? x was fixed at one. So this becomes one half plus one third. So what's one half plus one third? I think that's five sixths, right? Okay, so now we've got all four segments. So I'll come down to the bottom and we'll, we'll just note that the circulation of f around L path L, right? This is the notation. The circulation is equal to the sum of all those pieces. So segment 1 was negative 1 third, right? Segment 2 was 0. Segment 3 was negative 2 thirds. And segment 4 was 5 sixths. So when we, when we do all that uh, addition, we get what? Negative 1 sixth. Negative 1 sixth. And that is it.